The new midsize airplane NMA, or new midsize aircraft, is a concept airliner designed by Boeing to fill the middle of the market segment. In 2015, Boeing determined the market was large enough to launch a new design. In 2017, multiple airlines expressed interest in a composite, seven abreast twin aisle with an elliptical cross section. The new aircraft, likely to be known as the Boeing 797, would be available in two versions, a 225-seater with 5,000 nmi 9, km range and a 275-seater with a range of 4,500 nmi 8, km. Third-party forecasts for this market vary from 2,000 to 4,000 aircraft, though Boeing expects the market demand to lie at the upper end of this range. At a projected price of $65 minus 75 million, the NMA should generate 30% more revenue than narrowbodies and have 40% lower trip costs than the widebodies it would replace, but would cost $12 minus 15 billion to develop. It would be powered by a new 50,000 lbf 220 turbofan from GE Aviation, CFM International or Pratt & Whitney, with a bypass ratio of 10 to 1 or more and an overall pressure ratio exceeding 50 to 1. Boeing says it will decide in 2019 whether to offer the airplane to the market and in 2020 make its final decision on whether to launch the new airplane. Development would begin soon thereafter, with entry into service targeted for 2025. Topic: History. Topic: 2015. Air Lease Corp. Stephen F. Udvar Hazy believed that Boeing was planning to launch a more capable, all-new replacement for the Boeing 757 rather than a re-engined version. At the International Society of Transport Aircraft Trading Conference, he predicted it would be a Boeing 767-like, twin-aisle airplane capable of using 7,000-foot runways such as those at New York LaGuardia. Boeing's VP of Marketing Randy Tinseth said the company was focused on developing an aircraft with 20% more range and more capacity than the 757-200. United Airlines consulted Airbus and Boeing about replacing its 757s and was waiting for Boeing's response, as Tinseth wanted to fill the gap between the 737 MAX and the 787. Before the 2015 Paris Air Show, sales chief John Wojcik said Boeing had held discussions with customers and determined that the market was large enough to launch an all-new jet airliner, the first since the launch of the 787 Dreamliner in 2003. At the show, Airbus CEO Fabrice Bregier estimated that Boeing would have to invest $10 billion to develop a 757 successor with 220 seats and a range of 4,500 nmi 8,300 kilometers, corresponding to the capabilities stated by Boeing's Vice President for Product Development Mike Sinnott. Vinay Baskara of Airways News said Boeing's middle-of-the-market airliner would likely launch before 2020 and enter service in the early part of the following decade, Boeing denied that the new aircraft would be an update to the Boeing 767, although a revised 767 could be a possible stopgap measure. Estimates suggested that the cost of developing and building a new aircraft could even reach US$15 billion. United States dollars. Topic 2016 In early 2016, Boeing's two major options remained a larger 737 MAX variant or an all-new 797 design. The MOM was the subject of a session of the 2016 International Society of Transport Aircraft Trading conference in Phoenix, Arizona where major worldwide sellers, buyers and financiers of commercial aircraft meet. Airbus sales chief John Leahy said the industry has no need for a new midmarket airplane, since the A321neo is already for sale. In July 2016, Boeing forecast demand for 4,000 to 5,000 midmarket aircraft, leaving a market for 2,000 to 3,000 after accounting for the Airbus A321neo and A330neo sales. 
It identified the market sweet spot for the NMA as being a 200 to 250 seat twin aisle aircraft with more than 4000 NMI, 7400 kilometers range, but cheaper to operate than existing small twin aisles. The notional aircraft, which would enter service in the middle of the next decade, would need advanced 40,000 to 45,000 lbf (180 to 200 kilonewtons) high bypass turbofans with higher pressure ratios. Boeing development resources were committed on the 777X, 787-10 and 737MAX, whereas Airbus's R&D spending profile appeared to leave room for new development, however, Airbus believed that the A321LR and A330neo were sufficient to address the segment. Topic 2017 At the March 2017 ISTAT Americas Conference, United Airlines' interest in the NMA was confirmed by Chief Financial Officer Andrew Levy, who corroborated the assumption that it will be a twin-aisle aircraft with two variants, carrying 225 to 260 passengers with a range of 4,800 to 5,200 NMI 8,900 to 9,600 kilometers. Multiple airlines expressed potential interest, Alaska Airlines, Emirates, and Delta Air Lines for transatlantic flights. The new airplane is expected to have seven abreast seating, like the 767. The market favors single-aisle economics, and Boeing's challenge is to achieve comparable hourly cost and price per seat while keeping twin-aisle capabilities. Competition to supply the engines would be intense, with Rolls-Royce likely to propose the Ultrafan follow-on to its advance engines, Pratt & Whitney offering a new iteration of its Pratt & Whitney geared turbofan, and CFM International also in the running, to assess where the middle of the market lies. Flight Ascend Consultancy looked at existing twin-aisle aircraft with fewer than 260 seats and found that these offer an average of 234 seats and have an average flight distance of 2,000 2,670 nmi, with 60% of available seat miles below 4,000 nmi and 82% below 5,000 nmi. To be competitive, NMA pricing would have to be between the 787-8 and A330neo at $100 minus $120 million base full life value and larger single aisles at above $50 million, the 767-300er in its heyday cost just over $70 million. An elliptical cross-section could combine a twin-aisle cabin with the reduced cargo space of a single-aisle jet to reduce aerodynamic drag and operating costs, but would need more complex carbon composites instead of a simple cylindrical metal fuselage. Boeing relies on model-based systems engineering MBSE, already used in its defense and space businesses, to define customer needs and functionality early in the aircraft design process with an interdisciplinary approach. A systems architecture model feeds and interacts with analytic and verification models, and helps define the product to bound data management and control cost and schedule, and the constraints, interfaces and requirements. Engine integration defines takeoff and climb capability, aircraft noise and ETOPS range circumference and engine failure altitude. At the June 2017 Paris Air Show, Boeing's aircraft development manager Mike Delaney confirmed the use of composites for the whole airframe, which will have a hybrid cross-section and bypass ratios above 10 to 1. If the NMA is launched in early 2019, its design will be completed in 2020, with fabrication in 2021-22, build in 2023, flight tests and certification in 2024 and introduction in 2025, with the NMA planned for introduction no earlier than 2025, and the 787 being much larger, Boeing could conceivably restart passenger 767-300 or production to bridge the gap, with potential demand for 50 to 60 aircraft. In September, Boeing created a development program office, and in November named their company veteran and 777X chief project engineer Terry Beeshold, without a role yet. 
Its introduction could slip from 2024 25 to 2027, pushing the 737 replacement to after 2030. On 20 December 2017, Washington Governor Jay Inslee formed a committee with Boeing Labor Unions IAM and, SPIA and local government economic development officials to lobby Boeing to build the NMA in Washington state. Boeing continues to estimate middle of the maquette demand at between 2,000 and 4,000 airliners over 20 years, stating in September 2017 that it was closer to 4,000, while Pratt & Whitney, Rolls-Royce plc and Liam Co. think it likely to lie between 2,000 and 2,500. Airbus puts the figure at about 2,000 aircraft, not enough to justify a new $15 billion development program for aircraft to be sold for $55 million to $75 million each. Topic 2018 In early 2018, United saw the NMA reaching the market in 8 to 10 years. GE Aviation expected a launch decision in 2018 in order to enter service on target in the mid-2020s. Boeing was in active talks with about 50 potential customers and had defined two main versions, a 225-seat model with a 5,000 nmi 9, km range and a 275-seat version with a 4,500 nmi 8, km range. Delta Air Lines hoped to be a launch customer for the NMA, which would replace its 757 and 767 fleets. Delta operates 127,757s and 80,767s with average ages from 15 to 22 years. Boeing's VP Marketing Randy Tinseth is confident its forecast of 4,000 aircraft can be met, despite others seeing the market as between 2,000 and 2,500, because the NMA can change airline networks in the same way that the 787 has enabled 170 new routes to be opened since 2011. Solid production costs and sales forecasts are required to convince the Boeing board to commit to its development. Avalon sees a market for 3,500 to 4,000 airliners. The NMA is targeted to achieve a 30% economic improvement over the Boeing 757-767. Tinseth said the NMA will generate 30% more revenue than narrowbodies and have 40% lower trip costs compared to the widebodies it would replace 767, A300 and A330. Within its range, it would be significantly more economical than the A330neo, severely testing its sales if Boeing can keep NMA prices in the $70 million range. The target sale price for the NMA is believed to be between $65 million and $75 million. Ryanair CEO Michael O'Leary, kept informed by Boeing, said its seat cost is substantially higher than the 737 MAX. The conceptual design released in early 2018 has a 737 MAX style tail cone, large 787-777X sized cabin windows, a 757, 767-777 style windscreen, a 767-200 door arrangement and short engine inlets. As the A320, A330 investment has been amortized, the A321LR or A330neo can be offered at a lower cost, the NMA has to offer notably lower fuel and maintenance cost. Airbus could react with an A321 stretch or an all-new design, and could use a new 50,000 lbf kilonewtons engine, as recent all-new designs took between 88 and 101 months 7.3 to 8.4 years between the authority to offer and the introduction. A late 2018 to early 2019 launch would imply a 2026 service entry. At this time, existing airliners over 30 years old will have been replaced by current models, leaving 900 aircraft aged from 15 to 25 years to be replaced, 420 A321s, 270 A330-200s, 90,757s and 130,767s. 
The largest operator of these 15 to 25 year old mid market types is American Airlines with over 80, followed by China Southern, then Delta Air Lines, United Airlines, Air China, and Turkish Airlines with less than 40. In June, the NMA 6X was defined as a 228 passenger, 5,000 nmi (9,300 kilometers) airliner, and the NMA 7X would seat 267 in two classes over 4,200 nmi (7,800 kilometers). ICF International sees a market of 3,000 to 3,500 over 20 years, with the NMA sold for $75 minus 80 million, while collateral verifications believe in a 1000 to 1500 market and a $80 minus 90 million price for flight global's ascend 1500 nmas could be delivered for $67 minus 82 million each between 2025 and 2040 if its size is right and oriel consult expects a $70 minus 80 million price for Stephen F. Udvar Hazy, a decision should be made by mid 2019, with two potential engines derived from existing units. Boeing continued to assess the market as 4,000 to 5,000 aircraft and was working towards a 2019 decision too, while taking measures to protect a 2025 introduction into service. For the French National Aerospace Research Centre, ONERA, a cylindrical 7 or 8 abreast twin aisle has 20% more fuselage drag in crews than a 6 abreast, single aisle airplane of the same seat capacity. This is significant because fuselage drag is one third of total drag. However, an elliptical widebody can have an equivalent drag due to a smaller wetted area. Also, a twin aisle is more comfortable and has faster turnarounds than a single aisle. A cylindrical section is the simplest way to cope with the cabin pressurization's hoop stress while an elliptical section is reinforced and heavier, less so with vertical rods like the Aurora D8 concept. In October 2018, analysts from Sanford C. Bernstein, Morgan Stanley and Canaccord Genuity were convinced Boeing will launch the project. Boeing's Randy Tinseth stated an almost unanimous preference for better economics through weight savings rather than the heavier structure to carry widebody containers. Topic 2019 By early 2019, Rolls-Royce was anticipating an addressable market for 4,000 to 5,000 middle-of-the-market aircraft over 20 years, agreeing with Boeing's figures, and pointed out that Boeing will not capture all of that market, it expects demand for the NMA to reach 2,000 to 3,000 aircraft. Former Airbus sales executive John Leahy suggested that Boeing should create a new single-aisle aircraft to compete with the Airbus A321neo from 2030 instead of a small widebody. On January 30, 2019, Boeing CEO Dennis Muhlenberg clarified that whether to offer the NMA for sale would be decided later in the year, before an authority to launch decision deferred until 2020, aligned with the end of 777X development and enabling the NMA to build on 777X work. The two-stage decision process is standard at Boeing and entry into service is still targeted for 2025, but the delay could cause 757 replacement opportunities to be missed. Boeing intends to leverage existing technologies such as composites for the NMA. The program would overhaul supply chain practices and focus on more efficient production, support and maintenance that could also be applied to a future 737 replacement. In February 2019, Rolls-Royce PLC abandoned its engine proposal, leaving CFM International and Pratt and & Whitney as sole competitors. A new development would not be mature enough as the Ultrafan program is too far away from Boeing's needs, but Rolls-Royce could be interested in a partnership with another manufacturer. Topic engines The engine selection process is reminiscent of the competition to power the 777-200LR, 300ER at the end of the 1990s, which shaped the turbofan market for the subsequent years. Rolls-Royce proposed the Trent 8104 growth demonstrator, Pratt & Whitney proposed a scaled-up PW6000 wanting to limit the competition to two suppliers, while GE won exclusivity with the GE 9115B performance and GECAS 777 orders. 
Rolls-Royce obtained the same exclusivity for the A350, pushing P&W out of the widebody engine market and precipitating its narrowbody comeback with the PW1000G. The 45,000 lbf (200 kilonewtons) thrust was typical of the 1960s first generation of high bypass ratio turbofans. The GEC F6 for the Douglas DC10, the Rolls RB211 for the Lockheed TriStar, and the Pratt and Whitney JT9 D for the Boeing 747. This market was quickly left behind as aircraft and their power requirements grew, leaving the RB211 for the Boeing 757 until 2005, or the Pratt PW2000 for the Boeing C-17. Newer technology enabled 10 to 1 or more bypass ratios and overall pressure ratios of at least 50 to 1 at top of climb. This level of thrust is above modern CFM Leap or Pratt PW1000G single aisle engines, but well below Rolls Royce Trent or Gen X widebody engines. It falls below the 50,000 lbf (220 kilonewtons) limit for CFM International, and thus a scaled down GE9X core could fit a new low pressure system. Pratt could reach it by growing from the 33,000 lbf (150 kilonewtons) PW1133G for the A321 Neo. Rolls could propose its ultrafan development, a geared turbofan based its new advance core, but it is primarily focused on its larger 100,000 lbf (440 kilonewtons) engine. The GTF cost more than $10 billion to develop, and Rolls is facing financial difficulties which could be accelerated by being left out of the EU Clean Sky Initiative as a result of Brexit. Both could join together, but have historically been moving in the opposite direction, as Rolls sold its 32.5% stake in international aero engines to Pratt Parent United Technologies in 2011, essentially selling the ghost of the geared IAE superfan proposed for the A340, supplanted in 1987 by the CFM 56. CFM International has also considered geared turbofan architecture for the prospective aircraft. GE has expressed that it does not believe the market is large enough for all three suppliers and will not enter a three-way race which would not justify the investment needed, as it was the case for the A330's engines, leaving Boeing with two suppliers at most. Boeing has not yet decided whether it will use a single engine type, CFM considers an all-new direct-drive engine, and Rolls-Royce proposes its advanced direct-drive engine before 2025 and its ultrafan-geared design after. Scalable from 25,000 to 110,000 lbf, 110 to 490 kilonewtons. As a new engine development costs $2.50 to $3 billion, GE has to evaluate its market opportunities, preferring a single source for a low-volume airplane while Airbus would potentially need such an engine. GE Aviation's offer would be through CFM, with the leap as the baseline for a bigger engine, half a generation further, with advanced but mature enough technology. Boeing issued a request for proposals RFP, with a June 27, 2018 deadline for a 45,000 lbf (200 kilonewtons) engine with a thrust-specific fuel consumption (TSFC) 25% lower than the 757's engines. At least two engine makers want exclusivity for the $2 billion program cost. Even if its thrust crept to 52,000 lbf 230 kilonewtons, GE and Safran will bid through their CFM joint venture with a 3D woven resin transfer molding fan like the Leap instead of a Gen X, GE 9X type carbon fiber composite. Topic. See also Boeing New Large Airplane Boeing Yellowstone Project